good. Back with Brianna's mother, Carissa told police that she'd previously watched Taylor for extended periods of time, but that ended when Brianna enrolled her in daycare on the naval base. The last time she'd seen the little girl in person was also at the funeral for Brianna's grandmother. Police weren't ready to believe Carissa just yet, however, due to some interesting evidence recovered from Brianna's phone. I can tell you that it's pinging off of. What's throwing us for a loop right now is if she's living in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. Why is her phone pinging out at all? Despite this, Carissa swore that she hadn't seen Brianna or Taylor on Halloween. Police were still working on downloading the data from the GPS in Brianna's car to determine an exact route, so soon enough, they would know for sure who was telling the truth. The search of Brianna's phone turned up something else concerning, too. Police found a text message conversation in which Brianna had told a former co-worker in Virginia that Taylor had become a nightmare, as she was, according to her, stealing food and misbehaving. In Alabama, Carissa was so adamant of her innocence that she got Brianna's father, Wayne, on the phone to join the discussion and brainstorm what might be going on. I don't understand why she would even lie and say that she was picked up from me. Man, she lied to me. I've never been in trouble a day in my life. She is lying. She's trying to cover up something. Not sure what it is. She is lying. Well, you have no idea what she's trying to cover up, though. I have no idea what she's trying to cover up. That's the one thing I don't know. Someone was lying. But whether it was Brianna or Carissa was yet to be determined, as was the exact reason of why. Investigators would follow up on the Alabama lead, but as promised, also caught up with the movers Brianna had hired on Craigslist. They had nothing reassuring to say either. They never saw your daughter. They never saw you put her in the car. They never saw her at the other house. They never saw her. Why is that? I didn't want them to see her. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't know them like that. Well, I mean, you're not introducing me to her, but how did you? Did you yeah. leave her at the house on Southside and then go to, to, to Ivy without her? They never saw her. They never saw you put her in the car. So what happened? Nothing happened. Well, where was your daughter? She was with me. She's always she with wasn't me. with you. Yes, she was. The two movers are saying that they never saw. They heard water running, and you said that she was in there, but they never saw her. If what the movers were saying was true, it seemed like Taylor hadn't been at either of Brianna's residences. Carissa said she hadn't seen the girl in two years, and the child care records on the Navy base showed that Taylor's attendance became spotty throughout the month of April, and she was officially withdrawn back in May around six months before she was reported missing. A new horrifying question was quickly coming to the forefront of the investigation. When was the last time anyone besides Brianna had seen Taylor? Shockingly, the little girl's mother wasn't inclined to help answer this question. I'm done with this. I don't want to talk no, no, about no. this. Yes, I am done, because you're, no, you're lying to me now. So How am I lying to you? I'm not lying to you. I just said that my mom, I literally picked my mom, I mean, not my mom. I'm just saying what my partner said. And I'd like to explain to you, but, huh? I don't know where to get that from because I literally went down there. Um, do you want to talk to the night? Do you want to talk to the detectives? I spoke with her and then get that, find out what the information they gave. Um, I'm done with this because I don't know where this is going. But no, you're no. <laughs> like it's the second time this has happened. Like some other lady was like saying stuff that I didn't even say. Like she was twisting my words. Like no. Brianna has no idea that her odd behavior was quickly becoming the least of the police's concern as they were searching her apartment at that very moment. Just like they'd done at Ivy Street, police canvassed the area and talked to Brianna's neighbors. Disturbingly, very few of them recalled ever seeing a little girl. One man who did, named Carlos Johnson, said he found Taylor roaming the apartment complex unaccompanied back on April 17, 2019, looking for her mother. He took her home only to find her wandering the parking lot again a few days later. Carlos said that Taylor didn't appear frightened or distressed, like the situation was familiar to her. He also told police that he would see her waving at him from her window at times when Brianna's car was gone, suggesting to him that the little girl was alone. If police thought this was bad, then they must have been horrified when they entered the apartment itself. From the outside, Brianna's apartment was unassuming and looked just like any of the others in the complex. But as soon as the door was open, it was clear that something awful had happened inside. 
The entryway to the apartment was filled with trash, as was the kitchen. It was so cluttered with random items and refuse that it was nearly unusable. The living room was not in any better condition. Having been taken over by a heaping mountain of trash and personal belongings, it seemed no effort had been made to separate the two categories. There were children's toys and clothing included in the mess, most stained with what appeared to be feces. One of the toys in particular probably stood out to police, thanks to Brianna's description. A pink stuffed animal was found in the mountain of refuse, possibly Mr. Bear, the toy Brianna said Taylor refused to go anywhere without. Police would face a heartbreaking reason why Mr. Bear was there as they searched more of the apartment. Bleach and urine remover, along with more air fresheners, were also found in the apartment. If police thought the living room and kitchen were in bad condition, they were in for a shock when they entered the master bedroom. Police had to move more trash and soiled belongings to even gain entry into the room. The carpet was encrusted with filth, which appeared to include more human waste. When they opened the closet, the situation changed from merely disgusting to horrific. Just want clarity. Later, but not, it's, it's a late day. I just want my baby home. And, I, and that's, that's what we're, what trying, we're to trying to do. do. Well, the and, whole and, thing, because there's no way my mom would say she hadn't seen us since January. Like, what? And no. that's why I'm asking you. Okay. Do you want to continue to talk to us about what's going on? I do not. Not right now. No. Like, this is going too far. Like, my grandma. Okay, so you don't want to answer any questions as to the whereabouts of your daughter? I don't know where she is. If well, I and I'm trying to get the background. Here. Yes or no? I, I've told you everything that I know. Like, I, I don't know. But you don't mom, want to answer any more questions? My mom is on the way here now. Hmm? My mom is on the way here now. Okay. Do you want so to answer any? you want to talk to her when she gets here, you can talk to her when she gets here. But you don't want to talk to us anymore? I do not want to talk okay. to her. Okay. I need to call my job. Well, we'll take care of that for you. Do you need anything like a bathroom or water or anything like that? I need to talk to legal. Because I don't want to talk to them about the lease. Okay, do you need water? Do you need a bathroom or anything mm -hmm. like that right now? If you need anything, lock, knock on the door. The detectives would revisit Brianna in a bit, but went to check in on other aspects of the investigation. By this time, it was no longer just the Jacksonville police involved in the search. They'd been joined by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Department the Alabama Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and even the Naval Criminal Investigation Service, or NCIS. Additionally, the neighborhood canvas around Ivy Street continued the whole time Brianna was at the police station. Just before 10.30 p.m., officers in the area ran into a surprise visitor. What's your relation? My father. My father. Okay. All right. Give me one second. It's short. And the sergeant, really, we don't have much to say right, right now. If you want you go down that way okay. towards the command post and, you know, let them know your relation. Right. Um, but there's, you don't have any information. There's some kids in where she is. Back at the police department, Brianna was still in the interrogation room. If she was worried about her daughter or even concerned about what police might find when searching her apartment, she did a fantastic job of hiding it but found a few ways to help pass the time, including fixing her nails, redoing her hair, and going to sleep. Four more hours went by, during which Brianna again attempted to get some sleep in the interrogation room. Why am I still in here? Uh, I'll, I'll get some answers for you. Um, you just gonna have to need your need your patience for now. We're all we're all kind of sitting around and working diligently. We're not really sitting around doing nothing, but I'll, I'll get some answers for you, okay? My commandos? Yes, I do believe so. So I've been here all day. I know. Just just be patient with this, please. Unluckily, when a fresh set of detectives came in, it seemed eight hours of time out hadn't made Brianna any more cooperative. Hey, I'm just here to bro Detective Deborah. Couple things we need to go over with you real quick. Um, you're gonna be free to go. However, um, you're not gonna be able to go back to Ivy Street or um, Southside tonight, and we still have your phone. Um, so, who do you need to contact, or can we take you somewhere, or what do you? Mm -hmm. um, what's the best option for you? I can get a room, but my wallet is at Ivy. 
Brianna never came up with any options of her own, so the police called her command, who sent a petty officer from the base to come pick her up. Notably, over a total of more than 11 hours spent at the police station, Brianna never once asked for an update on the search for her daughter. When Brianna's mother Carissa heard about her daughter's lack of cooperation, she was perplexed. Why wouldn't she want to talk when her is missing? You know her better than I do. Because some of the things, a lot of, well, I, I can't even say some of the things, a lot of the things is not adding up to me. Investigators also asked Carissa some questions about Brianna's personality in general to see if it would help make sense of her odd behavior. How is she, is, is she like an emotional person? Mm -hmm. Do she shut down and she feel like it's getting too much? For no, her? I'm just saying if something traumatic happened, does she 